Okay, everybody, here's uh, a video on um, bringing a template into Adobe Illustrator. You usually work from a template. Most of the time, it will be a sketch that you do and scan or take a photo of your sketch with your phone and bring that in uh, as, a, uh, as a template uh, that works as well. Uh, we're going to be looking at transparency, making the template uh, slightly transparent so that you can uh, see to draw over the top of it. When you bring an item into Photoshop or into Illustrator, sometimes it needs to, to be embedded into the file. So we'll take a look at embedding the, the template. And then we're going to create, fill, and stroke some simple polygonal shapes and finally save the file uh, so that it can be uh, put into your folder in the uh, OneDrive, okay? Um, here is, uh, let's get started. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in a template for exercise number one, which I have a series of four exercises for you all to do um, using the, the pen tool to create simple polygonal shapes, no curves, just uh, straight lines. So um, let's get started with that. Uh, we'll bring in the temp, the first template. And in order to place a template into your document, you can drag it in and drop it from the desktop, or you can go to File, Place, and it will navigate out to the, your menu, and you can go to, uh, I have mine in CCC Fall 22. I'm gonna double click on that, and then uh, click on Pen Tool Exercise number one, which is a PDF, and place it in the document. And you'll get this little placement holder and you click and it comes into the document. Um, now, it comes in with an X over the top of it. Uh, what that means, that's like a placeholder for a, a picture, okay? So in order for that uh, image to actually be there for you to use that the next time you open up the, the program that that uh, image is on your page, you need to embed it into the file. If not, it'll just come up with a box with an X in and it'll be looking for that picture. But uh, if you go to file, uh, or I'm sorry, to a window and to links and open the, uh, the links list, you'll see that you have pen tool exercise one here. If you go to the hamburger menu and come over, uh, to the pull down menu and click on embed images. It will embed that image in and the X goes away off the top of your um, document, okay? The next thing we wanna do is lock it into place or well, let's turn it, uh, lower the opacity first so that you can see to, to draw over the top. Now this one would be fine the way it is because it's done in blue line, but uh, if you have a black sketch and you're trying to draw over it um, with the pen tool, it's going to be hard to see. So you, it's nice to be able to take the opacity or the transparency down. You can take that down in uh, opacity in the uh, menu bar across the, the top of the interface. Or um, you can go to a uh, window and come down to transparency and click on transparency. And in transparency, you also get that opacity layer. So uh, we could take that and reduce that down to about 45 and it makes a ghost image of the, the template, okay? Once we have the ghost image, then we'll go to file and, or object, I'm sorry, and we'll come down, we'll select the, uh, the ghost image, making sure that it has the uh, handles all around it. And we'll go to object lock and we're gonna lock the selection. That, that locks that template into place so that it's not movable. And we're able to uh, draw over the top and not move, uh, pick it up with one of the move tools or something and move it after we've started drawing, okay? Unlike Photoshop, if some of you are familiar with Photoshop, uh, in Photoshop, each 
shape has its own layer and you have to create paths and then you fill and stroke. In Illustrator, it's much different and much simpler. We can do everything on one layer uh, and we can uh, put each shape right on the page. You don't have to create a path and then uh, fill and stroke it. You can actually um, just draw the image with the pen tool. And as you're drawing it, it will put the stroke on as you're drawing it and it will fill it as you're drawing it. You wanna make sure though, that you're down here in your fill and stroke box. Right now, the stroke is set for black and the fill is for white. I'm gonna use the toggle switch and, and uh, select the, uh, um, the fill and come down to the fill with none box because when you start to draw and it starts to fill in, uh, it covers up your template. So we'll, we'll fill it with none and then we'll uh, click on the, uh, the stroke box and I'm gonna make that black. And now as we draw, it will put a black stroke with no fill on our shape, okay? So we're gonna select the pen tool and we're gonna select the square first. It's very simple uh, procedure uh, when doing polygons. You simply click and release to, to plot the first point on the template, okay? Since this is a completely horizontal straight line and this is a completely vertical straight line and the square is made up of, of completely straight horizontals and verticals, it's helpful to hold the shift key when plotting the next point because it will assure you that your line is perfectly straight. So you can do that with horizontals, verticals, and 45 degree angles only, okay? When you do something like this triangle over here, um, that's going to require you just to place the point in the right place. Um, you can't use the shift key to help keep it straight, okay? But to make this vertical, we hold the shift key and it makes it straight a straight vertical. Keep that shift key held down, click on the next point and your horizontal to um, make the horizontal line very straight. And then to finish the shape, you'll see when you roll over the end point or, or the uh, starting point of the first line segment we made, you'll get a little circle behind the pen tool. That means the shape is going to be closed. So when you click on it, we now have a closed shape and we have a shape that is a you know perfect square. It's uh, filled with none and it's got a stroke of black. If we wanted to fill this shape, we simply click on it and, and look for the handles around it. Click on the fill box and then under window, uh, I'm gonna close mine and then I'll reopen it. Under window, there's uh, uh, swatches. You can click on the swatches, they will open up and you can select a color while this is selected. As long as the fill box is selected, uh, select a color, well, I'll say red on this one, and it just simply fills our, our box with red. If you wanted to change the color, you don't have to make any selections or anything like that. Just make sure that you have the object selected with the handles and you can change it to blue or to dark red or orange or whatever color that you want. Okay, so that, that's a square uh, completely finished already. Okay, the next one is a rectangle or the uh, triangle. Start in the corner, click your point and release. Now, because this is completely horizontal here and straight, you can hold the shift key and go to the next point and it'll make a perfectly straight line. You can then click on the uh, top of the triangle and you'll see that because the red uh, fill box is still filled in, that it's filling it in, uh, filling in the shape as we go. We're going to click on that red box, the fill box, click on none here so we can see our template better, come down. And again, when you complete the shape, there's a little circle behind the pen tool. Oh, I actually erased it, that one from uh, clicking off of it too soon, okay? So I'm gonna do that one over again. We'll start here in the corner, come over, do a hold the shift key and make that horizontal line perfectly straight, go up to the top of the triangle and then finish the shape. Okay, so we have a black rule on that. We could put a red rule on that by clicking on 
the stroke box and maybe we want to fill it with yellow. Okay, so um, you can choose whatever colors you want to, to fill these shapes and to put a stroke on, on the shape. Okay, the, uh, you'll notice that uh, the, uh, the default is usually a, when looking at the stroke, I'm gonna call up the stroke box. The default is usually one point and you get the stroke box under window, by the way, come down to here, it's under stroke, okay? Uh, the default is usually one point. If it's not, uh, when, when you go to draw, click on your pen tool. Pen tool, come over here, put in one point, and then you'll be assured that it's a one point rule. Now, remember when we go on to this next shape, we wanna, before we start, we wanna click on the fill box and make it filled with none. I'm gonna make this shape have a black outline on it. Uh, click on the black for the stroke and just start at one of the corner points and make my way around this uh, six-sided polygon. And again, wherever it's a completely horizontal line, you can hold shift to make sure it's perfectly straight. Close the shape and select your fill box and you can make it any color that you want. Uh, a light green with a dark green stroke. There we go. So that is creating polygons with the pen tool. There's four exercises for you to do for this assignment. They get a little bit harder as you go along, but this is really a pretty simple procedure. Um, good luck with it. And um, if you have any issues, just uh, rewatch the video and everything should be uh, perfectly clearly explained. Oh, you know what? We, we didn't save this. Okay. So how do we save? We go to file in the pull down menu at the top of the uh, interface and come down to save. It will open up a save uh, box. You just simply type in the name of the file that you, what you want to name it. I'm going to call it uh, PT exercise uh, one. And you can, where do you save it? You can save it to, I would save it for, for you guys working in the lab, save to the desktop uh, and then drag it into your folder on OneDrive, okay? Or if you wanna navigate right to the OneDrive folder, uh, that's a little more complicated, but uh, I would just save it to the desktop uh, and uh, then drag it in from the desktop to your, uh, to your folder. And you'll get this uh, Illustrator Options box. Just click OK and, and use the defaults. So now that's saved to, uh, to my desktop. And I can simply drag it into my OneDrive.